Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I wanted to show you how to create a procedural net using the nodes provided by Maya and Arnold. Really what I wanted to show you is how to quickly create a net. So let's go ahead and start with something like a torus, a polygon torus. Let's take a look at our channel box and got our inputs over here. We can decrease, select this middle mouse and drag. There we go, something like that. Maybe not so big. Let's shrink it down a little bit. Maybe we want to give it a little more subdivision so it's smoother and let's scale it down. Something like so. Okay, now let's make our net. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a polygon. I'm gonna grab a cylinder, take a look at the top view and just kind of scale it so it fits into the basket or the ring. I might want to increase in the inputs. I'm going to increase the, well, actually let's get rid of the cap. So that's gonna change the cap to zero and then let's increase our axes. If I go over here, it's gonna look something like something crazy. Let's scoot this down. We don't need that top face, nor the bottom. We can take a look at the, let's see if this is, doesn't screw things up. Sometimes it does. <laughs> I brought the cap back. Okay, we can get rid of that again. We can get rid of this. Okay, great. So the purpose of this is to be able to manipulate this. So I'm grabbing a couple of edge loops and just kind of squeeze in a little bit like so. And maybe even might be better to just go ahead and scale this down as well. Ooh, let's undo. I think I accidentally selected some faces. Shame on me. Undo, undo, undo. Wow. Okay, didn't like that. So let's just insert our own edge loops. Okay, it doesn't look like much. Let's edit, delete by type history, modify freeze transformations, and I'm going to look at my UV editor. Hopefully this is going to be okay, but let's double click on this and just make it larger. Turn on the grid. Might need to just widen this up a little bit, maybe crush it a little bit, just a little bit bigger like so. So at least we're getting some sort of square so that the texture, when it applies to it, it won't get stretched out. All right. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and assign a new material. Let's grab AI standard. The color is going to remain white because that's going to be our string or the, the rope that makes it into a thread. What we want to attach the texture to is the transparency. Now don't get confused with transmission. Transmission is more like glass. This is opacity. Uh, which is basically transparency. The transparent, the opacity is either going to be seen or not seen. So let's grab, click on that little output and let's grab the cloth. So you see how's the third node there? Press number six and you can see that it's huge. Not exactly what we're looking for, but let's play around. So when we look at the cloth, you're gonna see the gap color. And as I change the gap color, you'll notice that it goes from light to dark. Now we wanna keep it dark. And let's render this out. We're not going to see anything. Um, we all know why. So let's turn on the sky dome. Okay, let's go back to this. Click on the output. And let's see what it looks like now. So it doesn't look like very much. <laughs> I actually can't see anything. It's kind of crazy. Um, and that's because it's white. Actually, let me change this color. Uh, whoops, not the intensity. It might be easier if we see a little blue. Let's see what that looks like. Probably a mess, but. Mm. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Um, so I've got the opacity and what I wanna do is make this, the UV to be white and white. So black means you can't see, white means you can see. And then what I'm gonna do is grab these and notice how the thread is getting shrunken. You see how that's going like this? All right, let's see what that looks like. Now we may not see anything, and part of the reason why it's because we need to make sure that we turn on the 
Arnold opacity. So we got to turn that off. By turning it off, we're going to start seeing some of that texture. Now it's hard to tell what's going on. So I am going to get rid of this dome and try something else. Create light, directional light. Duplicate, duplicate like so. So I got two lights and there we go. So now we have a little bit more of what we're looking for, which is almost like a net. So I'm going to put a floor just so we can see what's happening. Okay, now it looks a little bit clearer. So you can see that we have white where it's solid and where it's black, it's transparent. So we can use that to manipulate this a little bit more. Let's go back to our opacity and let's change a couple of things. Let's see. We can make the thread a little thinner and lucky for us, our preview is still working. Like so, good. And then we could try to randomize it, but that's not really what we're looking for. Ooh, we can animate it. So that'd be kind of neat. Um, hmm, kind of neat. Um, okay, let's go to our placement node. Our placement node is right now at 4, 4. Let's go ahead and increase it to 10, 10. And let's see what that looks like. So very quickly, we can create a netting. So let's grab this and I'm going to assign another material. This is going to be an AI standard as well, and this one is going to be a little bit in the, the, the red. Maybe that's too dark. Go back to saturated. Go back to this. Let's go to the placement, and then let's do 20 by 20. There we go. You see how it catches the reflections too? It's pretty sweet. It's a little thing off at the bottom. We can fix that. We can try to fix it using our UVs. So let's grab this and let's see if we can move it to a point where there it is. So until the white lines at the bottom. So I'm just moving the UVs just a little bit. There we go. So it looks like it's solid right there. So that's a quick way of showing you how to do netting. It's, uh, it's fun, it's quick, and you're not limited to creating it yourself. It's much more efficient than trying to model this yourself. It would take forever. You can also create a basket with it. You can create weave. I mean, there's really a lot of things you can use with this 2D node. So let's take a look at the hypershade and let's go to here and just graph our network. So it's pretty simple, you get your color, You've got your cloth attached to the opacity, and then you've got the placement node. So it's very simple and very effective. But don't forget that Maya has a lot of procedural things that you can use to create some really nice textures. So make sure you take advantage of that. All right, let's go with the Academic Phoenix Plus session, the plus part of the tutorial. So we have a basket, we have a ring. Let's animate this using end cloth. So if we want to use end cloth, we want to make sure that you add plenty of geometry because we need this to be able to be flexible and it can uh, bend. So let's add, I'm just adding some edge loops here and hopefully that will be enough. The next part is to just for the heck of it, I'm going to smooth it, mesh smooth. That's going to give me plenty of geometry to work with. All right, cool. Edit, delete by type history. Don't forget to save, modify, freeze transformations. And we'll just leave this one as is. Let's go to edit, delete by type history as well. Modify, freeze transformations just to make it clear. All right, cool. So this is going to be under effects. This is considered an effect. We're going to go and use the end cloth. So this is cloth. This is the part that's going to be affected. So I'm going to create as an end cloth. Now, if I, I also need to give myself plenty of time. So let's give ourselves about a thousand frames, press play. And there it goes. Now the issue is that we needed to attach to this ring. So lucky for us, we just need to grab the top vertices. Shift select on, whoops. Okay, let's try that again. Actually, I can't see anything. Uh, let's go to wireframe here. 
Let's go to the side view and there we go. Let's grab these top vertices. Go to end constraint and we are going to go point to surface. Now there is no surface to be selected. So let's grab this object, shift select this one, right click vertex. The vertices have already been selected from before, but you can always go to the side view and get more. And constraint, point to surface. Now it's gonna look like a little connector. You see how they're connected now? Perfecto, press play. Don't forget to rewind and press play. And now the basket is there. Cool, let's press six so we can see what's going on. All right, it's working, great. Now let's say we wanna have a ball that comes in so let's create a ball really fast. Maybe a ball that actually fits, something like so. Maybe slightly bigger. Gonna go ahead and modify, freeze, transformations, edit, delete by type history. It just helps if you have removed all the history and stuff. It just helps. All right, so I'm gonna keyframe this. So here is gonna be zero. And let's make this into a passive collider because I do want it to affect this. So I'm gonna select this, go to end cloth, create passive collider. I'm gonna keyframe around maybe 10, 12. Keyframe. And I'm gonna bring it over here. Let's try that again. Around 40. I'm gonna move it over here. Then around 80. I'm gonna make sure that it's inside here. And then it's going to come down over here. Something like that. So let's see what happens. Press play. Okay, it's a little slow. Boink. <laughs> Actually, let me move number 120. This goes from frame to frame. And let's push this over here a little bit. And let's get rid of this keyframe. So, oops, let me move this up. So it's gonna be, actually I'm just moving keyframes around. Try to make this a little bit smoother as possible. But a little slow there, a little slow there too. So let's bring the values together a little closer. It's not perfect, but you get the idea that it will. Let's rewind back a little bit. And maybe I'll move this here. And maybe delete this keyframe because it looks like I accidentally created several. So let's press play. Wink. And I'm thinking this needs to go a little lower, maybe some more like this. <laughs> and there you go. So if we watch this in Arnold, let's see if my computer can handle it. Oh dear, it looks like the texture disappeared. Let me just assign it. Assign existing material standard one. Let's double check. Let's make sure the geometry is an opacity. There it is. That's an output cloth. We need to make sure that's turned off. Let's press play, make sure. There it is. So what happens, just to let you know, what happens in when you create end cloth is that it cre it preserves the first geometry and then it adds a second piece of mesh, which is the output cloth. So that's the reason why there's two two shapes. The one's actually the cloth is being manipulated versus the original. So once I turn off the opaque and I assign both geometries uh, the shader, then it works just fine. So if we watch this, the animation is not great, but you kind of get, you can almost see the effect. Uh, I think I only need a hundred frames. Let me just cut this short here. And let's watch, let's watch it again. This is going really fast. So let's make sure that the play speed is not real time, but it plays every frame. Welcome to dynamics.
There you go. This is a little slow, but it's working. And almost there. Boom. Pretty neat. Then you just have to batch render that and you will have a cool animation. So that was a quick tutorial on EndCloth, on constraints and on animating, plus a little bit of the, of the background stuff that happens in EndCloth. So hopefully that was helpful guys. Um, again, if you guys like these, please share and like, uh, it really encourages me to continue making these videos. Uh, let me know if you like the plus sides or maybe you're not really looking into that. If you don't like the plus side, just let me know too. I'm more than welcome to just create the tutorial and that's it. It was just something that I thought you might want to push your work a little bit further. So thank you again for listening. Let me know if you have any comments or suggestions. Please leave comments below. You can always reach me at academicphoenixplus.com. All right, I will see you next time.